classify this as an ingredient or dietary supplement, clearly uh, we are talking about 1,3-dimethylamylamine or 1,3-DMAA, and it has many other names to it. It's commonly called methylhexanamine. It's called forthane, and uh, it was developed or in drug development by Eli Lilly uh, many years ago, actually in the, for- in, in the uh, mid-40s. And so, it, you know, it, its history is in the drug world as primarily a, a vasoconstrictor to, you know, uh, address nasal decongestion as a decongestant, things like that. It, it kind of has the same history as ephedrine or ephedra in terms of its, uh, you know, classical use. But it went off patent and then it, it went into limbo land and it, you know, uh, uh, many of these ingredient, you know, which I would characterize as drugs, kind of spill over into the dietary supplement world. It, it's kind of masked around ger, geranium. Um, there, there's also another ingredient called germanium, germanium with an M versus geranium. And some people think, well, this is just a pretty flower and an herb, so it, you know, can't be harmful. But naturally, you know, you can find it, but basically, uh, you know, it, it's kind of gotten into the U.S. marketplace through Chinese company or companies who have now synthesized this. It is a synthetic, in, you know, ingredient. I, you know, I'm giving my opinion on this, you know, scientific opinion. And I've looked at it very carefully in terms of the available literature out there in terms of three issues that, you know, we use as benchmarks to formulate in Max Muscle products. One would be legality. Is this ingredient legal? Does it meet uh, criteria of DSHEA, the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act? Has there been an NDI filed, a new dietary ingredient, things like that? And there's no evidence that uh, methylhexanamine meets that criteria. The other is safety. Uh, is it safe to use in humans? Is there any evidence uh, supporting that? And third is efficacy. Uh, these ingredients, this, this particular, I would characterize it as chemical, is primarily found in now these ultra-concentrated pre-workout. There's no evidence that methylhexanamine, you know, anecdotally in terms of the formulation of combining caffeine and methylhexanamine and getting that, you know, that stimulating kind of clarity, all the different subjective, you know, and people taking uh, these products in terms of how they feel. Many of you have probably researched this ingredient in terms of curiosity. There's a lot of uh, you know, most of the information on the Internet is from blogs and, and opinions. Uh, in terms of, you know, good science evidence, it's extremely limited. There, again, there's nothing published uh, under PubMed in terms of literature on safety and things like that. In terms of a product that we're aggressively focused in terms of launching is, is full-blown Triple X. And uh, I've spent a lot of time looking at that, this compound, you know, at, even as the possibility. I mean, I'm very pragmatic and open, but it's got to meet those criteria. And, you know, it was decided, you know, obviously we cannot use it because of, uh, you know, a lot of the negative stuff on there. The landscape or how I, I'm looking at this is very similar to ephedrine. You know, it kind of has that same indication. People are using it for kind of the same reason. It has a lot of the drug you know, in Australia, New Zealand, and, and, and a number of the athletes have been banned by taking this uh, ingredient because uh, some of you have researched have now uh, found that it is on, it was listed in 2010 last year on the world anti-doping list for banned substances, and all the substances on the WADA list are drugs. So uh, athletes, uh, Olympic athletes, and competitive athletes worldwide, they are uh, being tested for methylhexanamine, and it is characterized as a, a stimulant a drug under the WADA listing. It's actually an S6 stimulant. So basically, you know that if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, you know, it's a duck. Uh, in, in my scientific opinion, this this is not a, di- a legal dietary supplement. Uh, it is a drug. Its pharmacology is is similar to a drug. You know, we can't use it. Um, it, it doesn't meet criteria of, of safe, legal, efficacious dietary supplements. So, you know, as a, as a responsible, ethical company to consumers, you know, we're not going to formulate it in maximum supply.
products. In terms of FDA and, and, and all the discussions we've had, and you know, why hasn't FDA, you know, taken this off the market or whatever, I mean, you know, if you look on FDA's website, there's been a whole slew of recalls on, on male enhancement products and things like that. I would predict, you know, that this particular ingredient will be nailed in, I, I, again, this is just a very much of a prediction. I'm giving it four to six months before, uh, you know, we're going to see enforcement, significant enforcement on that. So, you know, I may or may not be, uh, you know, on, on this prediction, but uh, it's just something we're not going to touch. And I really, you know, from a public health and safety, I, I know it's super popular and, and all that, but, you know, just like with Ephedra, it, it really went out of control uh, in terms of, you know, everyone who's been in this industry kind of knew the, the high roller coaster. This particular ingredient has the, to me, in my opinion, the exact same potential, uh, as ephedra. So I just cautious, you know, just be careful. Uh, as a company, we're not going to come out with a maximal food product with, uh, methylhexanamine or hiding it behind your geranium or anything like that. 